Europe's traces of the past are for the most part invisible, hidden in forests, located on the sea floor, or buried under modern housing. Archaeological heritage is hardly tangible for people if not researched and opened during excavations. Virtual archaeology seeks to research and develop ways of using computer-based visualization for comprehensive management of archaeological heritage. Techniques like 3D heritage recording, virtual reconstruction, and presentation of the sites support the utilization, regional development, and the protection of our archaeological heritage. The Virtual Arc Project reveals and valorizes these hidden and forgotten archaeological heritages, as well as increases the sustainable use and protection of archaeological heritages for future generations. Therefore, eight pilot monuments are studied using 3D technologies and visualization tools in the field of virtual and augmented reality. Situated in the eastern Ore Mountains, the small town of Depoldesvalde is the location of an archaeological sensation. Following unusual damages by unknown underground cavities, nearly untouched silver mines from the Middle Ages were discovered in 2008, directly under the town. As a matter of public security, the mines had to be filled and sealed forever. For this reason, Mining archaeologists accompanied the underground surveys. It is for every archaeologist like a sixer in the lotto when he really first after 800 years so an ort betrit den zuvor kein anderer betreten hat and here auf eine mittelalterliche Bergbaulandschaft stößt, die es so kein zweites Mal in Europa gibt. Since 2019, these mines are listed as a World Heritage Site as part of the Esgeberge Krushnohorje mining region. The Archaeological Heritage Office of Saxony discovered remarkable wooden tools and constructions used by miners in the Middle Ages to secure the galleries. The wooden remains are often quite fragile and require an elaborate and lengthy treatment for conservation. Diese Funde müssen sehr schnell freigelegt, dokumentiert und geborgen werden, sodass wir über die Daten diese Grabung virtuell rekonstruieren können. An almost complete winch from around the year 1220 was discovered and reconstructed virtually. It is the oldest and best preserved winch in European mining archaeology. Visualizations range from simple 3D models of archaeological finds over simple virtual reconstruction to lavish and realistic models of mines underground. Diese Techniken sind in der Tat ein ganz, ganz wichtiges Hilfsmittel, um Archäologie, wie hier beispielsweise Mittel, äh, die mittelalterlichen Bergwerke von Depoldiswalde, erlebbar zu machen und zu visualisieren. Through mobile devices, people can discover the invisible mine entrance and join medieval miners working underground or even work as miners ourselves in a virtual environment via VR glasses and controller in the VR media corner of the Mibers Museum. Das ist immer ein großes Problem bei den Archäologen, dass das unter, Ta oder unter, unter dem Boden liegt und keiner äh, ja, kann sich vorstellen, was eigentlich da unter seinen Füßen liegt. Deswegen haben wir hier äh, ein neues Projekt generiert, äh, das sich genau diesem Problem, aber auch der Entwicklung solcher, äh, solcher Methoden äh, auch äh, äh, ja, auf die Fahne geschrieben hat. The heritage and its visible traces lie hidden in a salt valley, 300 meters above Hallstatt. The area was already famous in the 19th century, when remains of a huge cemetery from the Iron Age were discovered in the salt valley. The region around Hallstatt is the oldest uh, industrial and cultural landscape we know. From Stone Age up to now, salt was produced and still is produced. During this time, huge galleries were dug into the mountain following the natural layers of rock salt. 
miners broke the salt into small pieces with pickaxes, transporting it over several stories to the surface. Rock salt from Hallstatt was distributed across all of Central Europe. Mining activity was halted by a landslide, which filled the galleries with mud, rock, and even trees. Thanks to this infill, the natural pressure of the mountain was unable to close the galleries, preserving them for centuries. These former huge chambers cannot be dug out completely, so research is done with small and narrow tunnels. The emerging profiles, providing substantial information about ancient mining, are documented by thousands of individual photos. With them, it is possible to generate a 3D model of the excavation tunnels and further a reconstruction of the Bronze Age galleries with their staircase. Many of the underground sites are not accessible to the public. Uh, within the project, we digitized them, we digitized the sites, and also we digitized uh, the finds, like this leather bag, more than 3,000 years old. And in a few months, it should be possible to uh, bring this information to everyone interested in. In the virtual ARC project, it was possible to update the scientific reconstructions to a new level and also bring it alive in an interactive VR experience. Within this project, we intend to visualize these remains and uh, with these visualizations, we bring the information about the sites to the public and the stakeholders. And this information is very important to protect the sites. The implementation of 3D models, movies, pictures and information into a free mobile app makes it possible for everybody to discover the oldest salt mine in the world. On a high plateau in Chivasano, northeast of the town of Trento, we find another mining area from the Middle Ages called Monte Caliso or Monte Argentario, the Silver Mountain. In this area during the Middle Ages, the late Middle Ages, a very strong activity of mining had been carried out by workers coming probably from southern Germany, what is today south of Germany. And uh, at that time, the silver ores were exploited. Thousands of sinkholes, visible on the surface over 12 square kilometers, are evidence of old mining activity. A laser scanner attached to an aircraft during flight sends out laser light to the Earth's surface. The sensor measures differences in wavelengths and times of the reflected laser light. It is possible to filter out reflections from vegetation, creating a digital terrain model of the Earth's surface. A labyrinth of galleries has been partly documented. Some are still opened and well-preserved, with mining traces still visible but quite difficult to access. The Eco Museum Argentario has created thematic paths, and they also organize excursions and didactic activities to preserve and explain mining heritage to the people. Il progetto Virtual Arc potrebbe eh, aiutarci a trovare un'altra un soluzione che è quella appunto di virtualizzare con una modellazione 3D eh, una o più di queste, di queste miniere nel sottosuolo e quindi eh, permettere eh, a chi non ha la possibilità di, eh, di entrare di vedere comunque eh, questo, eh, questo patrimonio che alla fine è un, un patrimonio eh, archeologico perché si tratta appunto di, di miniere medievali con tracce di scavo eh, manuali e, e quindi è davvero è un, um, un patrimonio importante. Based on extensive archaeological surveys using GPS, the knowledge of the site has increased. The collected data could be used to create a progressive mobile application which can be downloaded from the web. The application includes different points of interest along thematic paths around the site where texts and images are shown. There are 3D models of tools and a virtual working scene inside the galleries which can be seen through augmented reality application. The main constraint we have been facing with is the fact that the area is very large, uh, is the use of the soil for agricultural purposes, is the forest management, 
And last but not least is the presence of treasure hunters in, in, the, in the area sometimes that are searching for uh, metal objects in, in the site. These are the main constraints we have faced. Summing up, the aim of the Virtual Arc project is to make this heritage better known, is to protect, it is to give it value in order to uh, improve actions of the many stakeholders who can use this uh, uh, cultural landscape to develop uh, the economy of our area. The Buchberg Mining Center is situated on a large, flat, easily accessible hillock. The local name for the site is Poperek, which is roughly the Czech equivalent of Buchberg in German language. Documents dating from 1258 AD cite the naming of Buchberg. After some surface surveys in the 1990s by the local museum, the Masaryk University of Brno conducted geophysical measurements. The survey area is recorded in lines by a magnometer, making it possible to detect disturbed soil. They cause spatial variations in the electromagnetic conductivity of the soil or in the Earth's magnetic field. The measurement results are displayed graphically, providing the archaeologist with an insight into the structures of the site hidden beneath the Earth's surface. As it turns out, this is a mining sediment that can now be investigated. V celém tom pracovním prostoru okolo těch výhní a pecí se nachází velké množství dřevěného uhlí. To je velice dobře dochované, protože se jedná v podstatě o materiál, který už by neměl podlehat zkáze. I z tohoto dřevěného uhlí my vlastně dokážeme získat velké množství informací. The planned result is a 3D reconstruction of the whole area. The 3D models related with mining and ore processing coming from 3D photogrammetrics and 3D scanning. Based on these results, compared with medieval written source analysis, will be created plans and 3D models of the whole site. At the time of its boom, the mining and metallurgical settlement was extensively developed, making it possible to analyze workshops, such as an ore mill. Along with miners' houses and the workshops, there was also a chapel. Co je v současnosti aktuální, tak to je pochopitelně těžba lesů, které byly napadeny kůrovcem, přičemž ta kůrovcová kalamita speciálně v letošním roce je obzvlášť silná a akutně dolehá takřka na celou republiku. Nejinak je tomu i tady na lokalitě Buchberg, nebo cílem toho trojrozměrného virtuálního modelování by mělo být i v podstatě vytvořit pomůcku, která jaksi bude sloužit třeba i v jakémsi osvětovém edukačním vzdělávacím režimu, tak aby třeba i hospodáři a majitelé lesů dokázali lépe pochopit hodnotu těch památek, které se nachází na jejich pozemcích. The town of Nitra lies at the western foothills of Triberets mountain in the Danube lowlands. Nitra has played a significant role in Slovakian history, especially during the Middle Ages. Written sources mention Nitra as the location of the first church built in Slovakia, dating back to the 9th century. Professional archaeological excavations in Nitra started in the 1930s. Starting in 1998, the castle of Nitra was systematically excavated and the development of this research continues until today. Based on these archaeological excavations, and also supported by new data, like photogrammetric, archival data, and LIDAR scans, the castle and the city of Nitra have been digitized and visualized in a new way. The digitalization focuses on items that are unseen to the naked eye, or that can only be partially seen, like the castle's southern casements. The actual mass model was made by using drone photogrammetry. The interior was visualized and everything was put together to replicate this part of fortification. Explored movable objects are scanned, for example, by an armed scanner. The output consists of 3D models which are useful for virtual reconstructions or presentations. 
These virtual artifacts are put on figurines to reconstruct how the people looked in the past. For example, through AR, it is possible to see the different churches in and around Nitra and what they looked like in the Middle Ages. This virtual reconstruction will allow the public to better understand medieval Nitra. These tools can be better included in urban development, construction works, and for tourism purposes. The Ljubljana marshes are a large wetland south of Ljubljana with excellent preserved pile dwellings. Around 1,000 pile dwellings are known, 45 on Ljubljansko barje. Ona moču kolišča ma harski prekop. Del UNESCO deviščine kolišč je alpskih jezer. V resnici jih tukaj ni videti česar. Prav noč, zdravn. Jasno, seveda, arheološka deviščina je skrita, pokopana, nevidna. This pile dwelling was dated to the Copper Age around 3,500 BC. Small test trenches of the site were excavated in the 1970s. Archaeological interest in the Ljubljana marshes dates as far back as the mid-19th century, when the first remains of prehistoric wooden structures were discovered. To be archaeological dedicina postala vidna, prepoznavna, jo treba seveda naprej odkrit, prepoznat, ovrednoti in na to seveda rekonstruirati in predstaviti širši javnosti. Within the Virtual Arc project, geophysical data, ALS data from LIDAR survey, as well as drone and archival data were used to map all the natural and archaeological features in the study area. Based on this data, an AR application allows the user to orient themselves in space and approach places where pile-dwelling visualizations are available. This data provides information about the position and size of individual houses and the spatial extent and organization of each hidden pile dwelling. A visualization was created displaying the landscape changes of the Ljubljansko Barje from the end of the Pleistocene through to modern times. In cooperation with the Ljubljansko Barje Park, the existing infrastructures around the UNESCO pile dwellings, such as boards, are included in the virtual arc project and application. Upravlja in zasleduje dva cilja. Prvi cilj je ohranjanje teh kolišč, se pravi, da ne propadajo, in drugi cilj valorizacijo oziroma prezentacija teh kolišč. Ljubljana marshes are used for agricultural purposes. Therefore, it's highly endangered by building deep drainage channels and deep plowing. Šota, prejšnji pokrov šote, začne odstranjati. V par desetletjih je so vsi tiste silne količine šote, ki se je nabrala v tisočletjih, pokurli, porezali, porabili kot korivo in gnojivo. In te aktivnosti so tudi odkrile sledove pretekle posilitve. Zdaj je Ljubljansko barje kulturna krajena, krajena, ki so jo naredili ljudje v zadnjih 100 do 120 letih. At the bottom of the Bay of Putsk, around 250 meters away from the shoreline, you'll find the remains of port structures. Tutaj za mną znajduje się jedno z największych stanowisk archeologii podwodnej w Polsce. Zajmuje prawie 15 hektarów. Są to relikty portu wczesnośródniowiecznego, który został odkryty pod koniec lat 70. -tych. The area has been studied by the National Maritime Museum and the Nicholas Copernicus University since the 1980s. We are here in Puds with our excavation of our research projects which focus on early medieval harbor which used to function here uh, between 9th and 14th century AD. To map the seabed, a multi-beam sonar is used. This sonar sends out sound waves in a fan shape, recording and measuring the water's depth by bouncing sound waves off the sea floor. By moving forward, it gives us a strip of the sea floor. This hydroacoustic survey creates an accurate bathymetric map. It can also help to discover and visualize submerged objects. 
Aerial photographs were used to create a geo-referenced ortho map of the site, and underwater photos were taken for the creation of 3D models. The most interesting places were selected and their 3D models were prepared using photogrammetry. For the last two years we've been working on a project uh, Interact Central Europe. A project Visual Arc is focusing on visualization of archaeological remains which are not accessible to the general public. All of this data was combined, creating a virtual reality model of the harbor. Ja dzięki uzyskanym danym będzie można zrekonstruować hipotetyczny wygląd, wygląd portu, a następnie udostępnić go gronu, e, s, szerokiemu gronu społeczeństwa. Based on available datasets from different sites similar to Putsk, 3D models of medieval artifacts were created, which can be displayed through a mobile device app. Another visualization of the early medieval port is shown in an installation for the virtual presentation in the fishing port of Putsk. It is very important to protect this sensitive heritage site at the bottom of Putsk Bay, especially against illegal divers or natural threats such as erosion. In Sukoshan, on the Dalmatian coast, you'll find the ancient Roman port of Babir, submerged a few meters underwater. Babir is one of the Roman villas with some structures that are submerged nowadays because it was built on the seashore and it was probably a big economical complex. The Roman port once belonged to the antique Villa Rustica from the 3rd to 5th century. During 1973, underwater archaeologists found out that there are two structures here situated in this area. So basically we can see underwater two piers, which are composing one small harbor, which is protected from south wind and north wind. From 2016 to 2018, major archaeological research and excavation took place by the International Center for Underwater Archaeology in Zadar. After bathymetric surveys, and the production of the orthophoto model of the site in 2017, a digital elevation model was created. Before creating any sort of visualization, 3D models of the site, people and items specific to the Roman period, were created. A 2D video shows the current and previous states of the site. This scenario has been reviewed by the relevant stakeholders, in particularly scientists of the University of Zadar, and the International Center for Underwater Archaeology. A mobile application was created, including the 3D model and the 2D video of the site in a virtual tour through the site, suitable for VR glasses. We want to promote tourism in a way which is sustainable. That means not only to increase tourism arrivals and overnights, but somehow to implement what the locals want what other stakeholders in tourism want and what the tourists want. For that, access points were installed to familiarize guests with the site and its historic background. The unawareness of the site's presence, as well as shipping and fishing activities, require new strategies in protection and management of this site. The virtual model of the site is uh, very useful uh, when we talk about uh, submerged heritage because not a lot of people dive and it's usually hidden from the eyes of general public. People love their places, people love their heritage, but if they don't understand that heritage, it's more difficult to explain the necessity of archaeological research of historical research, of investing money in reconstruction, presentation, both material and digital. That's why I think this is the future of our work, not only as a common person, but also as a scholar. Archaeological heritage not only tells us about the past, but is part of our daily life and we could even learn from it for the future. This is why communication between the different stakeholders is so necessary. The virtual ARC approach could act as a bridge between conflicting parties with their own interests. Moreover, immersive visualizations, 
lead to a better and easier understanding of complex features, often intangible or little understood. Virtual archaeology offers new ways to create community engagement. Based on detailed 3D heritage recording of different types of pilot monuments, a multifunctional visualization of archaeological research and interpretation is possible, which could be presented to the public via a wide range of applications. By including the virtual world in heritage communication, archaeology and its sites become more popular and attractive. Free available tools and instruments offer everybody access to archaeological finds and sites and to immersive experiences of past stories in their own way. Heritage engagement will move beyond experts and become not only part of regional and local identity, but society again. Also ich habe äh, das Gefühl, da mittendrin zu sein, wenn man auf das Display guckt. Und ähm, man sieht einfach mal das, was man vermutet unten drunter. Und solange man das nie greifen kann, dann ist das ja immer ein bisschen schwierig, dass man sich das vorstellen kann. Musik